Are you ready to have a good time with a couple of fun guys? Are you a fan of the Star Wars universe? Have you seen Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1, The Marshal? If the answers are yes, yes, and no, you may want to consider if this show is for you right now. There will be spoilers, and we'd hate to ruin anything. So there's your warning, buddy. Welcome back, Mando. I am IG-11. I am this child's nurse droid and require that you remind him to me immediately. Except you were the best in the Parsec. I have spoken. Welcome, Hail Ming listeners, to the first of a new subset of the Hail Ming Power Hour pantheon that is Hail Ming Power Hour presents This Is The Way. This Is The Way. Where Rick and I, that's right, Rick and I go through and talk about one of our new favorite things in the world. You, you know what our new favorite thing in the world is, Rick? Ice cream sandwiches. Ice cream sandwiches and... Uh, just... Ice cream sandwiches? That's right. The Mandalorian. The the new Disney Plus show where, um, you know, John Favreau wanted to make a show about uh, Boba Fett, and instead he got this, and I think it was an improvement. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we keep having these conversations about what we want to do next on Hail Ming, and the first episode of season two dropped, and we haven't stopped talking about it yet, so we said, hey! Here's a great idea. Why don't we just do a running, you know, series for The Mandalorian? But the only problem is, is the first season's already passed. But we're really excited right. about what we're seeing right. right now. So what we want to do is kind of pick up currently and do season two. And when we get to end of season two, we'll go back and recap season one. Does that sound like, is that right, Danny? Sure. Yeah, we absolutely can do that. And. <laughs> You know, it was just a matter of we wanted to, to, to strike while the iron was hot. We um, we missed the opportunity to, to, to jump in and, and do a, a week-to-week commentary on the first season. So, you know, let's not miss it again. Uh, if you guys enjoy our reviews on stuff, then we'll try and make it entertaining to talk about season two and all of the, the beauty and the love that has been put into this sci-fi epic. Absolutely. And also, keep in mind, now... We love Star Wars. We boy, boy, we love some Star Wars, oh, boy. boy. <laughs> but we are not like certified masters of knowing everything about Star Wars. I mean, we know quite a bit, but no, we're not going to sit here and and fool you guys or you guys get mad at us thinking well, you guys should know all this. Well, we may know some people's names. We may not know some people's names. We love the movies, and we really are loving this series so far. So don't get it in your head that we are total professionals of Star Wars everything because we're not. But we still do know some stuff. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, <laughs> if, if you want cred, I, I saw the first one in the theater 54 times with my mom when I was a kid. Um, I I love all three of the original movies. I, I, I'm pretty... I was pretty stoked about the, the prequels, you know? Like, they, they haven't mm-hmm. aged as well, but... I like the three later movies, and, and I've seen all the ones that have come out. Um, I read several of the books. I, I ran a role-playing game for a bunch of my friends. I mean, I've done a bunch of stuff, and I know a lot of trivia. But, man, I mean, yeah. I can't keep up with it. There's a lot it's of stuff I just don't know. 
Yeah, it's too big. And, and it's kind of like the comic book thing you talked about in one of our very first episodes where it's hard to keep up with what's canon and what's not anymore because you get so many side stories that changes the outcomes of things. And, yeah, it, it gets to, to be a jumbled mess at times. So, folks, feel free if you're listening and we miss stuff and you want to bring it to our attention, feel free to jump on Facebook and say, hey, guys. You forgot this, and we'll say okay, thanks, and we'll ignore it and go on our be- on our way. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's kind of how but, it goes. That's kind of how we do everything with this show. But uh, we just are—I say we. I am really excited about where this series is going, and I feel like Danny is is the same. And uh, here we are, man. We're we're at the first episode of season two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could talk about how season one was, was incredibly rewarding and the way that they put it together. You know, I could talk about that, but that's not what we're doing right now. So, you know, as far as season two goes, I think we'll start off with that. And then we can talk about how this series has been um, a joy from beginning to end. Yep. So if you've seen season one and you're caught up with us, Season two starts off with a little recap of what you, you know, what did happen in season one. But uh, we kind of get a shot of the Mandalorian, and he's basically going into uh, a, a fight arena where there's some gambling going on, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's some kind of a seedy place that has uh, graffiti on the walls that, that indicate that maybe they've just recently been liberated from some imperial entanglements. And, uh, you know, they, there's, a, there's a fight going on. Who's fighting in that fight? Yeah. Uh, well, all I hear is people going, Kumate, Kumate. <laughs> Kumate, Kumate. Jackson! Jackson! <laughs> there we go. We already blew it. It's a Hell Ming episode, uh, folks. T- tune in for our Bloodsport episode coming up in, I don't know, three seconds. No, no, but I want to point out that these are the skinny leggedest. Gamorians I've <laughs> yes. ever seen. Yeah, these Gamorian guards are are uh, lacking some some buff, if that's the right word. Well, I mean, you know, they they got big old like shoulders and stuff, but they got these these spindly little legs, and I guess it's just because you know the the Gamorian guards in Jabba's palace were mostly pu- puppets, you know, so they were wearing big fat suits or whatever. These guys, you know, they're they're fighting, but man, it just you know at, at the little fur loincloths they've got and on down they've, they've got these spindly <laughs> little legs but it's, uh, it's okay they're still whacking each other with these giant axes that have some yeah, kind of battle force axes fields are cool. to them they're cool man it's cool yeah very cool but uh mandalorian is walking in and he's looking for somebody in particular and he's looking for a guy named gore koresh Ooh. which is voiced oh you surprised i knew the name yeah <laughs> yeah i am oh uh, it's good Gore Koresh, which is voiced by John Leguizamo. Yeah, I, well, I read that. I, 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 and on the rewatch, I was kind of listening for it. And man, I, I couldn't pick out yeah. his voice. Guy's a voice well, chameleon. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of what got him a lot of the jobs he got, right? Um, the thing about this, uh, to me, I'd like to do a little research on this, but I swear that they modeled this one-eyed Cyclops dude after Ernest Borgnine because it looks like. His character from Escape from New York sitting there with just one eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and yeah, he's got the he's got the jowls for it for sure. Yeah, and he's there to get some information from the guy because he's trying to find another Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, he's um, yeah, he's looking for more of his kind to. He figures they'll help him to to you know in his quest. And uh, lo and behold, um, Gore Koresh has uh, got other ideas. So even though he's there and it's some sort of trade that they think it's going on for the information, things get a little out of hand. And then just out of nowhere, Gore Koresh jumps up and shoots one of the Gamorrean uh, fighters in the ring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like, I've got different plans. And he just shoots a dude, man. <laughs> Everybody takes off running. And then you got... Koresh's group that are his gang or whatever, and they grabbed a Mandalorian. They're kind of holding there, but do you do you think that's really going to keep the the Mando no. in his location for very long? No, no, because Mando takes out that 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 tri that that three pointed staff, 
and he throws it across the room and he, and he hits that mystic and he goes, and he goes into the ground. Oh, wait, no, no. It, that's a different Cyclops. That's a this, yeah. different movie. Different movie. <laughs> no, man, he releases the whistling birds on them, man. And all those little missiles come out and start popping everybody. And those things, those and things are you, getting some play, you know, since he got them in yeah. the like third episode or whatever. Like, it's it's a great weapon, man. It's kind of like the Death Blossom. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and it only hits your enemies. It doesn't. Well, of course, it might not just hit your enemies because right before that, the uh, the the child, right? If we're going to be in, the, yeah. well, don't call him Baby Yoda. I mean, I, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. The child, sure. you know, pushes a button and closes up his little crib because he's seen this before. He knows what's about to go down. <laughs> I don't want those coming here and, and hitting me. That's right. My big old baby black eyes are going to be closed and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, so the Mando just mops the floor with everybody and then grabs uh, Gore Koresh and takes him outside. Actually, uh, Gore's running away and he like lassos his legs right and then hoists him up in the air by his feet yeah yeah and, and on this planet there there are these you know some kind of um there are some yeah. kind of of creatures in the dark and he um he definitely drops you know he definitely you know d- drops the guy into the darkness so that uh so that those those creatures will come out and you know take him and there's there's the whole foreshadowing where he says well i won't kill you you right. know, like, and yeah. you're like, oh, you what's won't he die gonna from do? my hands. Yeah. yeah, right. It's it's one of those uh, commando things, right? Hey, you said you'd kill me last. I lied. Yeah, kind of deal. But uh, he gets the information that he's wanting from Gore Koresh, where he's got him hung up, and uh, finds out. Guess where we're going, folks? That's right, right back to Tatooine. Back where it all started. Can't get enough of this place, right? I mean, you know, from from here, Luke talk about it. You know, it would it would seem to be kind of like a place where nothing goes down, but you know, that doesn't <laughs> check out because everything goes down on Tatooine. <laughs> every every movie ends up there. So, but he goes. He's looking for a place called Mos Pelgo, yep. right? Yep. Uh, so a little rundown, old timey mining town or whatever. So here we go. We're flying back to Tatooine. And we land back at the the old uh, repair shop, mechanic shop, landing strip that Motto runs. Right, right. Which and you might remember from the first season, um, Amy Sedaris plays her, and you know, yes, she's great. You know, Strangers yeah. with Candy, and she was on a couple of episodes of what, like SVU or something. But other than that, you know, he's, she's accomplished, and she's just as entertaining, man. She's great. And this is where they try to sneak little pieces of, you know, some some humor in here with the little uh, repair droids running around, uh, you know, getting their face stuck on a vacuum cleaner, all that kind of stuff. I will say one thing that I love about what this series does is it is able to take the stuff that we know and love from the original trilogy and then take stuff from the prequels and kind of mesh them together and make it all work. Yeah. And... and it's it's done very well, and this is one of those examples because Mando doesn't really like the little worker droids, but he kind of gives them the go ahead and kind of give the ship a once over because it's been roughed up a little bit, and you know they're back there doing their goofy things like they did in Episode One, and you know getting hit in the head and knocked down flat and all that kind of goofy stuff. But we also get the return of R five D four. That's right. That's right. And as soon as they you know they they make a point. You know, when this R2 unit, you know, I, I guess it, I guess it's an R2 unit. Maybe, maybe only R2 is an R2 unit. But when this uh, astromech droid shows right. up, um, you know, it's red. And you're like, oh, it's like that. But then you, if you look in the top panel, you see where the motivator yeah. popped out. And it, and it like sprayed juice all over the top. And it's still stained on the top of that droid. <laughs> I'm like, I know where that came from. And it's still on Tatooine. <laughs> you, you said juice. <laughs> Droid it's juice, man. juice all over the t- motivator. <laughs> droid, droid juice is the grossest juice. <laughs> <laughs> kids, don't forget. Kids, don't forget every morning to drink your droid juice. <laughs> hey, man, I'm motivated to drink my motivator droid juice. I mean, I, I remember, you know, I remember Luke saying, "Oh, Ben, this one's got a bad motivator." You know, <laughs> hey, what are you trying to pull here? What? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and it brings you back like that it, to your point. Exactly, it. 
It's yep. just a small thing, but it's immediately recognizable because you've seen it a hundred times. You know, it it's very right. faithful to the original. Of course, they get in there and and where, where is it? She that tells him how to get to um, to Mos Pelago. Uh, to, to, in a way, because she gets the R five to bring up the, bring up that really crappy visual, right? <laughs> to show him, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't see anything." Well, it used to be there. <laughs> So he just kind of heads out that direction. So she kind of—I don't know if she just points and that's the direction he goes. But he arrives there, and it's—it turns into straight up old-time western high noon dude riding in on his horse, even though he's on a speeder. Yeah. And he's in like low gear, just creeping by, and it's almost to the point to where you see people just—they see him and they kind of hide back in the shadows when he passes by. We don't like strangers around here, that kind of thing. It's absolutely a Wild West kind of kind of feel, yes. you know, and, and even to the point where he 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 parks his swoop bike and then he uh, he jumps off and goes into the nearest saloon. Yeah. And uh, did you notice that the bartender is like a weak way? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what yeah. what version of you know species they are, but I was like, and that's a, that's whatever weak. Weequay was right, right. There were well, there were a bunch of them that worked for Java, and yeah, I, I think the the yeah he calls him Weequay, but I think that that's the name of the uh, the the alien race, maybe the species. So maybe you know, maybe, so. maybe he's just a week like like you know, my name is Danny Human Being Bennett. So you know, people just say hey Human Being, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine. It's all good. <laughs> oh. But yeah, this town has been through it, man. Because like I said, it's it's a very small, poor community that lives off of mining and Mando walks into this bar and he asked the bartender, have you seen anybody that looks like me? <laughs> and he goes, uh, yeah, there's a guy around here. looks like you. He's like, you know where I can find him? He said, well, you can ask him yourself. And we turn around and look at the door and in walks a very familiar looking figure. That's right. And, and you know, it's a great backlit picture, um, of him coming through the doorway and uh, it's somebody wearing that 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 ubiquitous uh, Boba Fett armor, you know the yeah with the greens and the and the yellow stripe and and the I man it's just awesome. It's a great intro, yep. and it's even got the dent in the helmet, you know that 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 kind of signifies. Yep, that's that's Boba Fett's for sure. And uh, wow, I mean this is uh, this is that thing where when the first words the Mandalorian was coming out. This is kind of what we were hoping for, of it being a Boba Fett show, which is kind of how it was originally pushed, I think. Not that I'm saying anything negative about it, but that's kind of the thoughts that first come to your mind was they're going to do a, a Boba Fett show. But here he is. I mean, here's at least we think him at the time. And uh, the guy comes in, sits down at a at a table, and asks uh, the Mandalorian to come have a drink with him, then... He takes his helmet off and sets it down, so that automatically lets the Mandalorian know that this guy is not a Mandalorian, and uh, ends up being a guy that they call the Marshal of the town. Is Cobb that right? Vanth, that's right. At this point, Mando says, you know, "Mando tells him, hey, you need to take that armor off and let me have it right now.'" There's a great, you know, there's a great build up to that where you know the Marshal says, "Hey, you know, give us some uh, spotchka." Is that what the stuff they all drink? He's give me, give us some spotchka. And you're yeah. like, is he going to drink? He can't take off that helmet. Is this Boba Fett? You know, there's this long, like, kind of, and he walks over and sits down. And then, you know, from the back, they just show him set the helmet down on the table. So, you know, he took it off, but they don't show him for a long minute. And then, you know, they they pan yeah. back and it's, you know, it's it's Timothy Oliphant, you know, who, yeah. who's great. But we can all, you know, we can all agree that he's the, uh, he's Peter Gallagher with less eyebrows, right? I mean... He really is. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, he's great. And, you know, like he, he's like, well, I guess, uh, you know, and knowing what he knows about Mandalorians, he knows that it's not going to go well that he's got the armor and it doesn't. Right. And and he's got he's your typical small town sheriff, marshal guy that puts all the pieces together. Well, when I saw you coming in here, I knew this wasn't going to be a good thing because I know how good you are at killing. But then I saw the little one over there, and then I thought, well, maybe not. So, you know, he's good at that kind of banter back and forth of judging a person, you know, based off of just what he's seeing before people get crazy and just pull out a gun and start shooting people, which ironically is kind of what it ends up <laughs> turning into. Yeah. 
I mean, they almost have a shootout right there in the place because, again, of, you know, hey, you've, you've got this Mandalorian armor that should not be in your hands. And it doesn't really indicate if the Mandalorian knows who this armor belongs to, if he knows that it's Boba Fett stuff or not. It hasn't gotten that far into it yet. Yeah, I, but uh, I don't think regardless. I don't think he knows Boba Fett. He just knows his Mandalorian armor. I, I could be wrong. But they they kind of have a little confrontation, and right when they're getting ready to draw and just do a, a showdown right there in the bar, you start hearing a big vibration, and the marshal holds up his finger like, "Hold on, just one second. and they go step outside. And you see off in the distance, sands flying up everywhere and a lot of rumbling. Then all of a sudden, it's like a freight train comes through the middle of the town, but it's underground. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that, that's when that's when the Mandalorian becomes Tremors, right? I mean, we, we can all agree. Yeah, exactly. That, that, yeah. And I'm not even saying it in a bad way. I mean, who doesn't love Tremors? But No. But that's what it becomes. You know, the, they're on Tatooine. If anybody remembers from, from A New Hope... When uh, 3PO and R2 are, are running around yep. there in the desert, there's a big old skeleton of a crate dragon, which has become the thing of lore. Yeah. And that's what this is. It's a giant crate dragon, and it's a, it's a looming doom for all the people that live here in this place. And, and so from that point on, they have to put their problems aside to to overcome this greater enemy, which is, you know, the, the crate dragon that's been, you know, the... That's been killing livestock, right? It eats a bantha right there, like it just eats it. You know, <laughs> jumps up by the ground, eats eats a whole bantha, one bite. Just grabs it and keeps on going. It don't even stop to chew. That's right. So, so I mean, we're so so at that point, you know, now the marshal and Mandalorian have something that is a common enemy, and he says, "Look, you know, if you help me kill this thing, I'll just give you the armor back. But if it hangs around." Then it's going to kill everybody here. So what do you say? And the Mandalorian, being a pretty yeah. pretty good dude, is like, yeah, I'll I go around doing good things for people because that's that's the way I'm written, and I'm going to do this. So you know, they they head off to do it together. And this is another one of those examples of taking stuff from the older movies and the prequels and stuff because they're riding side by side on these speeders. And Mandy's own Mandy, <laughs> Mando's own one. Mandy, it kind of looks like the one <laughs> Mandy. <laughs> hey, Mandy. Uh, he looks like a straight up. I like men in movies. Like Mandy. <laughs> well, he, he's driving the speeder, looks like it's from Return of the Jedi. And then you got the marshal over here that looks like he's on one of those turn by, turbine ones from uh, episode one, like uh, they did in the in the race there. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's like a pod racer jet yeah. engine. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. It's like a sidecar, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's an odd looking thing. So, but. What's cool about it is we kind of get a flashback of what all happened in this little town beforehand. It's like when the, you get uh, the story of the Empire failing and then uh, the mining collective just decides to come in and take over this town. I mean, like, instantly. <laughs> how how scared can you be of a company just yeah. called, or the bad guys called the Mining Collective? Well, you know, they're, they're pretty mean looking. They look kind of like the... Um... They look kind of like the bad guys from from uh, the Force Awakens that that show up on on Han's ship. You know the yeah um, they got goggles yeah. and masks and skull caps and and they they don't look human because they they look like they're just coming in to lay waste to this town of regular villagers. You know yeah and uh, and I think that's the point. You know they're a new yeah, enemy and Marshall just kind of sneaks his way out and. While they're just in there blasting everybody in that bar, he runs out and for some reason reaches over in one of the uh, vehicles that the the mining collective is in and just grabs this. It looked like a minnow bucket, but <laughs> it's full of some uh, what is it, silicax crystals? Yeah, I think he calls it silicax crystals. So, like you know, just just in preparation for this, you guys, I, I did actually do a little bit of I like Googled you know Easter eggs from. Mandalorian season two, episode one. And uh, two of the things that I thought were, were fun was a, you know, when they're celebrating the end of the empire, they, they're, they're watching a hologram yeah. of the, of the death star blowing up. It's yeah. the second death star. And, um, and the guy who did this, this, this video I was watching said, and so there's this little scrolling text around the bottom, you know, that's in the, um, that's in the the language that they have all their signs in and stuff in the Star Wars universe, and he and he interpreted it, and it's actually the the scrolling text 
from the beginning of of, uh, of Return ah. of the Jedi. Yeah, right. That's, cool. that, that's fun. That's fun. And the other thing was he said the the silicax crystal, uh, um, I guess uh, you know, um, uh, duffel or whatever yeah. it is, the container that he takes is actually um, it's the same container that that one of the guys that was running away from Cloud City and and Empire Strikes Back is he's running and he's carrying this same wow. container. So you know, but. To your credit, you remembered Silicax crystals. Uh, usually, I write down details like that, but uh, instead, I just kind of watch somebody else I put just, them together for you. Of course, that's, but, you know, I'm just I'm like, yeah, them. I don't really. I mean, obviously, they got to be some kind of value, or you wouldn't have took them. But you know, if you're heading out of town, you know, and you're and you're in a desert, I don't know that crystals is your best answer. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought that too. On, on rewatching, he says, you know, I, I grabbed this thing and and uh, and. Lucky me, it was full of silicax <laughs> crystals, and then I walked for three days without food or water. I think I would have dropped that damn thing right. full of silicax crystals. I mean, like it's it's lucky for him he didn't because it turns right. out they're useful. But but um, I think I would have dropped that thing, and you know, and and tried to get faster to someplace that had food or water. Well, he drops it all right, um, right in the hands of some Jawas because they stop and pick him up, and uh, you know, this is where he finds the uh, the Boba Fett armor, right? So they open it up. The little container, they see the, the crystals, and they want them for themselves. And they're trying to give him all this other stuff. And he's like, nope, I want that. And I don't think yeah. he even knew what it was. He just knew it was some kind of armor. Yeah, and I've got two things on this. You know, like, I agree. He sees the armor. He's like, that looks about my size. Hand it over. But, two, you got to give Jawa some credit. You know, they could have just left him for sure. dead and taken his stuff, right? But they didn't because they're all about bartering. And I've always kind of thought that was cool that, that Jawas are like that. You know, he, in the first season, you know, Mando destroys a lot of them. Yeah. Like, because, you know, he he doesn't value them. But I, I think Jawas are cool. And the second is, I got to ask, man, how many sand crawlers do you think there are? <laughs> I don't know. Like, they're humongous. <laughs> and it seems like they, they show up everywhere you want to be, you know. And they were even on that planet where he got um, the child in that one. Right. That wasn't Tatooine. Yeah. So, you know, Jawas have these humongous big, you know, tanks that roll around in the desert, I guess on all these planets. I'm even impressed that they even see him laying on the ground. I mean, how could something that big, you know, see that, uh, you know, if you're that high up? <laughs> if you're... Well, that, that's what they do, I guess. You yeah, know, like... they're scavengers. I mean, they're they're looking for stuff, so. Yeah, so they must have some, you know, stuff that that's uh, set to sense for life forms or something. You know, if we want to be real technical about it, well, maybe it's those light real bulb eyes. About Jawas. Maybe those light bulb eyes that they can see better than everybody else. <laughs> I love I love Jawas so much. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> I mean, they're just so cool. Uh, so that's kind of the backstory, and then he ends up going back into town with his new armor and kicking some butt, and running the miners out of yeah. there, and. There's one scene that I almost stood up and cheered is when he's kicking all their butts. Yeah, I know the even, one. I they, know the one. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's one of those things we've all been waiting for, right? But yeah, the the rest of the miners jump in their yeah. little machine. They're like, we got to get out of here. And they take off. And he waits till they get That's right. out of town a bit. And then he bends over and the, the little scope and the comes little up visor over his comes eye. down. Yeah, just like, and oh. we die. <laughs> <laughs> we die. <laughs> but yeah, he leans uh, over, man, and, and he shoots that rocket off of his back and blows up the vehicle. And I, I looked at Becky when we were watching, and I said, I've waited probably 30 years to see that. <laughs> man, anybody who had that, that like, G.I. Joe-sized yep. Boba Fett figure, which I had, and the face fell off of it, like, like it just Ooh. fell off of it. I know, right? And it just had this like blank face with holes in it where you were supposed to stick the face on and it fell off. Anyway, but that rocket shot off. It had like a grappling hook or something. Yeah. And it was so yeah. much fun. Just shooting that thing at people. It was so good. But and then Yeah, the other get... thing is is when the when the thing comes down, that the noise it makes yeah. is the same as the tar- the targeting reticle from uh from from a new hope. You know, it, it makes that like that dee 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 you know, that, yep. that same noise. Which I'll probably end up throwing in one of our intros, so you know we'll we'll hear it. You'll hear it. You'll know. <laughs> but yeah, it's man, so much, it was so good though. When I heard that, I was like, I know that sound, right? So good, and just just the 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 the, the vision of that actually happening, 
you know, you're kind of shortchanged because it's not Boba Fett doing it. But at the same time, you're like, I've always wanted to see this. And we finally get it. And uh, my question about this, though, is when he got the armor, did it come with multiple rockets? Because where does he get another one at? You know, maybe it's um, maybe it's standardized somehow. It's like ammo for a gun, and it's like maybe they're rare, but he's he got a few. That's a good question. Yeah, it's a good question that I'm not going to bother to ask, but I'm <laughs> glad you asked it. Just like how many sand crawlers are there? It's like it seems like they're all pretty damn big, and how many could there really feasibly be? But and Jawas seem like they're everywhere. So you know, probably yeah. on every sand crawler, there's at least five of those rockets. So anybody that's listening out there, if you know the magic <laughs> of the reoccurring Boba Fett rockets, let us know because we we we, we want to know. <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there as a reason to watch The Mandalorian. You know, it's like an homage to our regular show, and I'm going to say, dude's scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Cobb Banth, man, he's got this pashmina, you know, this this big old red scarf is like you know, so jaunty. I love it. <laughs> so they end, they end up st- they end up stopping out in the middle of nowhere. They're they're going to where uh, the crate dragon is, where he he says he knows where it lives. And uh, on the way there, they stop because they either sense something or know something, and then. Uh, you know, these strange dog-like creatures come out like they're going to attack them with spikes on their backs and stuff, which are the dogs that belong to from episode, I don't know, one, two, three, whichever one. They belong to the the Sand People, the Tusken Raiders. And, I think uh, they might first show those things in three, but yeah, yeah. I think that's right. I think it's the third one. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, you got... <laughs> You got the marshal over there, and he's kind of like getting his guard up, getting ready to shoot. And then uh, Mando just stands up and makes his noise like, Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. Just he, like that. He straight up makes some Tuscan Raider noises. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the dogs stop, and they start wagging their tails, and he's petting the dogs. And then you get a couple of Tuscan Raiders coming out. And. I do have a question about this because this is the part to me it's almost a little cheesy is yeah. the whole communication with the sand people because it's a combination of speaking Tuscan and sign language. And I'm like, couldn't you just do one or the other? <laughs> well, I, I think they wanted it to be a, a, a combination. And, you know, um, because he does it in the first season, too. Like, you know, when, when they run into the Tuscan Raiders, yeah. he communicates with them using this this these hand signs. And I did read that, uh, that the people who were making these episodes, they actually, um, enlisted somebody who, uh, who was fluent in, in American sign language to, to kind of generate this, uh, Tuscan language. Right. Yeah. I kind of saw that too, but it's just that thing of, I mean, if they can understand each other with the, the guttural sounds they make, then why need the sign language? Or can you just do the sign language? And not have to grunt. I don't know. That's an excellent question. Yeah. I, maybe maybe their language is is somehow deficient, and without the context of the the, the signs, it, it doesn't work. But yeah, I mean, we do it okay. I mean, I'm on a microphone. I don't. See, I can't see you right now. Right. So, but again, for all I know, you could be you know giving me two birds and, and sticking your tongue out. How did uh, which you are change, seeing me? You know. <laughs> this is the way. Here's both of them right here. <laughs> this is the way. Both middle um, fingers, tongue out. <laughs> this is the way. And, you know, the, and we have to admit, come on. I mean, the Tusken Raiders are pretty much the rednecks of the galaxy, so maybe they do require two levels of of communication to make everything work. I don't know. I'm just saying. I think they they established themselves as the rednecks of the universe when, you know, Anakin was 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 trying to like win a pod race, and they were hanging out on the butte over there, <laughs> shooting at him, shooting at him with their <laughs> rifles. You know, like. And you know, and and hooting and hollering about it, you, <laughs> you know. They, I mean, they're trying to make them into a, a noble people or whatever in in the new stuff. Yeah. which that that's cool. But yeah, they were always kind of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But uh, through this conversation, which gets a little squirrely at times because of the communication barriers, and they're they're trying to do the thing where they try to give the the marshal something to drink, which I don't know looks like a rotten papaya or something. And, uh, yeah, it's like it's like one of those puff balls you get in the in the woods, and you you squeeze it, and like the smoke comes out and it yeah. scores. Yeah, that's good. You, yeah, that's that's really good. That's what it looked like. He sticks his thumbs in there, you know. Yeah, he decides not to drink it, and it kind of insults the sand people, and and they start up a little ruckus there, and then Mandalorian comes and down and says, "Look, we're all here for the same purpose, and they're gonna try to collectively defeat the crate dragon because sand people hate." Great dragons too. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the great dragons are just jerks. They come and eat all your banthas. Yeah, and apparently banthas are really important to all these people because you know they they really can't stand to have them eaten. I don't know what they do yeah. with them. I guess they're just pack mules. You know, they carry around bombs and stuff. <laughs> well, they're the only an- animal that will run in single file. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> they need to train some of those um, little those little uh those, those little mastiff dogs to to carry stuff around. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they can do hey, that. Carry some stuff around, dog. Make yourself useful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they start laying out a game plan of how they're going to fight this dragon and they notice that when they're looking at this that they they do this little scale project. They got a little skeleton that's supposed to be the dragon. They got these, like these little chocolate chips that they're putting on the ground to represent <laughs> yeah, the people. Yeah. <laughs> and he ends up throwing like a whole bunch more down there because of something that uh, Mando says. And then the uh, marshal's like, "So, what does that mean?" He's like, "Well, I just volunteered your <laughs> your whole community to come down here and sacrifice themselves to help us kill <laughs> kill this dragon." And he never says. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, you know, he, he knows he's pretty much by the short hairs at this point. Yeah. And so, you know, at this point, they, they, they go back and they, they tell the people, hey, you know, we, we're joining the sand people. Are like, what? Those guys are monsters. And they have that whole thing. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, they come, it's a Western they come and, and you've got to have belligerent villager people. Yep. Yep. You I love it, too, the, when he says, and the... <laughs> when Cobb says, uh, he's like, you know, that crate dragon keeps coming through here, wrecking our town, eating all of our livestock, and God forbid, it gets into one of our schools. <laughs> I'm going, wow, that's right, folks. The new Magnum 44 crate dragon. It eats through schools. <laughs> it eats through schools. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I didn't see a school, I, but I guess they got children. Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. That works. You know, and... and I, I like I like two things in this whole thing. I like how the the Mandalorian comes out and he you know is like listen, you know the Sand People are barbaric, but they've said that you know if you help them <laughs> out, then they won't draw a blaster on you until you want on them. And all they want is the the carcass and its ichor. <laughs> and I'm like, man, that's that's some awesome stuff, man. The carcass and the ichor. <laughs> it's like, and it also you know nobody in the village is like. Why do they want the carcass? I guess because they assume right. they're you know barbaric people. They're going to eat off the ribs or whatever. <laughs> it was straight up a dragon slayer at the end of this too. By the way, yeah, but, it is absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but we haven't got it, there I'm, yet. <laughs> no, 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 not there. I'm just going to say you know, and then you know, there's this whole like they the the sand people march into town and and they they're working together, you know, and one of them drops a bomb and. You know, and, and and the guy's like, "Are you trying yeah. to blow us all up?" And then you know, "What are you doing? That's an explosive there." <laughs> yeah, and, and then Cobb yeah. you know jumps in between them, and he like he 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 smooths it out. But this is probably my favorite line for the whole for the whole show. Right after he smooths it out, you know, the villagers try to like like at the dude's throat, and the the sand person was about to like you know to beat him into the ground, <laughs> and Cobb says, "It's going to be great." <laughs> <laughs> he's because he's so i mean it's it's just so much fun like how he's like yeah Ooh, yeah it's gonna be great you know like oh uh, my hat so now you get this whole the elephant the whole bunch they're marching down to the pit where this creature lives and come to find out it is a abandoned sarlacc pit yeah and Cobb even says, there's no such thing as an abandoned Sarlacc pit. And uh, that's when Mando says, it is if the Sarlacc has been eaten. 
So, is the crate dragon a Sarlacc killer as well? Don't know. I guess so. Could be. I think that was what yeah. it was intimating there. Was it the um, crate dragon took out the Sarlacc? Sure. So, <laughs> how, <laughs> how about when they uh, do the test, right? <laughs> they lead the bantha <laughs> out there, and one just goes, <laughs> you know, you, you don't, nobody wants to be that guy, right? Hey, take that one down there and yell really loud, and then run back as fast yeah. as you can to see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, we're a little out of order here, but I, I think that is a hilarious scene where the guy takes the bantha out there and, and it just ignores the bantha and just eats the dude. <laughs> oh. oh, they did that stuff, earlier, man. didn't they? they yeah, did that yeah. Earlier. But, I mean, it's the same setup. You know, this one, they, they right. just put a bunch of bombs in the ground and they're like, we're going to convince the great dragon to go over the this hole and then they're going to blow it when it's belly. And the whole time you got a bantha that's all strapped up with bombs, and I think I think anybody watching knows what's going to happen. But you know, I mean. right, right. So, but yeah, yeah they they I do mean, this yeah. thing where they bury all the bombs on in the ground, and they're going to try to get it to come out and blow it up underneath because they said the belly is the weak point. And again, let's send Larry, Curly, and Mo <laughs> up to the mouth of the cave <laughs> and just go, "Hey, dragon!" <laughs> and take off running. <laughs> hey. You want a reason to watch this show? These freaking supersized crossbows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got these arquebuses or something, you know, they're they're like they got the four arms of the uh, of the bow all bent back and they're all wrapped in in mummy cloth because, you know, that's that's what makes them sand people weapons is that they're all wrapped right. up in mummy cloth. And then, yeah. you know, they've got them pointed at the mouth of this cave like when this thing comes out we're going to shoot it with these giant arrows, and that's not going to go wrong. All systems go. Yeah, they're thinking they can shoot it, and they're going to have ropes tied to it, and we can all hold that dragon out and blow it up. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't quite work, does it? <laughs> you, know, it you know, think back to Return of the Jedi when the when the, the Ewoks tried to trip the the, uh, <laughs> the, the ATST. <laughs> you know, it's, it's walking through the woods, and it's just dragging a bunch of Ewoks. I mean, that's basically what happens is great dragon <laughs> just dragging around a bunch of... Just, Sand people. Yeah. Is that but it's is awesome. that bad sand people? Tuscan Raiders. I don't reckon. Well, oh, okay. I mean they're, good, they're, good. they've been called both, so. <laughs> But uh you gotta you gotta right. admire the scene though, because the dragon comes out and they, they do try to blow it up and it goes down in the ground and then it just plays this great game of Where's Waldo, right? It just starts popping up all over. It's like, I'm over here. No, I'm not. I'm over here. It's like, how does something that big <laughs> move that fast? Well, and it shows up at like the top of the mountain up at the, you know, like it's been in the ground, like under this cave. And then it shows up on the top of the whole mountain that the cave's in. Like <laughs> it just went down and, and just, just went all the way through all that rock. Anybody who's ever played a video game in the last 10 years knows what this is. This is the boss battle, right? I mean, you, <laughs> right. you, you, you drove it across the bomb, and then you blew up the bomb, and then it shows up somewhere else, and it vomits a bunch of stomach acid all wow. over all your dudes, yeah. right? <laughs> Which I haven't decided yet. I mean, is that killing them? Because we don't see anybody like standing there going, ah! It just kind of... It, like it, uh, it seems like it only hits sand people, too. But, like... <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I think it digests them. I really, I, really, I think it's like some, some yeah. nasty acid. Yeah, it's almost like xenom xenomorph type stuff, right? Well, from and, alien, you know, true to its name being a dragon, you know, it's got to have some kind of a kind of a breath weapon, right? You know, it's yeah, it's not fire, but it's this like you know, in it, it because it's an underground worm like thing, it just kind of vomits this this uh this acid Toxic all over waste. big yeah. groups of people yeah it's nasty nasty yeah it's pretty awesome <laughs> it's re it's really yeah, it dang is. awesome yeah, it as a matter is. of fact uh so their plan of blowing it their plan of blowing it up underneath doesn't really work so they have to come up with another plan and that's where mendo's like hey you and me we're gonna fly up here and we're gonna just start shooting this thing in the face <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, they they just they, they're like, you know what? We got jet packs. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so if you got a jet pack, you got to use that thing. That's right. 
So they go up there and they start trying to blast it. And I keep thinking, oh, one of them's going to hit them in the eye. Maybe they blind it and then it's more fair game. But no, they're they're even though they're supposed to be great shots, we don't shoot them in the eye. So uh, yeah, more vomiting, yeah. more people disintegrating. All that's going on. <laughs> And is this where Mando gets the idea? Is this about this point? Yeah. Because it's pr- looking pretty hopeless at this point. You know, you're yeah. basically going to lose all yeah. the villagers and all the sand people because this crate dragon ain't going down. Yeah. So, so Mando's and like, he go- I've got it. I've I've got a plan. So he goes down and he basically pulls a sheriff Brody on him here, right? Except it's a little more extreme. Instead of it being a uh, fire extinguisher that you put in the shark's mouth and shoot it. He uh, lets the uh, the dragon eat him and a bantha that's got all the bombs on it, and waits till it gets far enough away, and then boom, <laughs> blows it up. Yeah, yeah, and I forget what I don't know what he does, but whatever he does makes it bust up out of the ground and open its mouth so he can fly out first, because otherwise, you know, he'd be blowing yeah. himself oh, yeah. up. Right, and you know, and then he boom, he blows it up, and 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 here we are, the end of Dragon's Lair, yeah. right? Right. And then, you know, you got your Tusken Raiders down there cutting up the meat, looking around through there, and you're like, okay, this is, they're going to, you know, take this meat and, and live off of it for years and years and years. And then you see one yeah, of them reach down like, and pull up like a... sand kebabs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they, <laughs> one of them reaches down and pulls up a great big pearl, and they all start celebrating. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, uh, so, I, that's another thing that, that this whole, you know, uh, Easter egg thing I, I saw said, you know, there was a yeah. crate pearl, which apparently shows yes. up in Mythos several places. And I think I've sure. read the book that he referenced, but I, I don't remember the crate pearl. Apparently, Hansel uses one as a buy-in for a Sabacc game or something. But cool. Well, that's cool. You know, all, again, think, the people who make this movie know this more is, about Star Wars than me. Right. I think they actually use it, too, to make lightsabers, too. I think that's one of the things is it's used for creating those as well. So it's uh, pretty valuable. Well, they, they use a focusing crystal. What's the um, – the crystals have a name, too. A kyber crystal? To, to make yeah, a, a, a – a, I think it's a kyber crystal they, they use to make a – I'm sure somebody will come on and be like, no, it wasn't – I don't know. We don't have fans <laughs> like that, really. And if we did, I, I wouldn't be offended. If you want to correct me, I'm cool with that. But I know that there's a cool, like in the animated Clone Wars stuff, the, those five to fifteen minute episodes that um, that Gendy Tartowski did. There's a whole thing about a, a kyber crystal mine that uh, that that is this, the place of a battle in the Clone Wars. It's pretty cool. I don't know about anything about any of that. All I know is that Mando jumped down this creature's throat. Blew up a bantha and come flying out. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> I'm gonna tell her. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it right now that if you did make a lightsaber out of a damn crate dragon pearl, like I don't know if it would like be like a like a like a drippy acid kind of lightsaber <laughs> that would like sear through stuff, or if it would have a big old mouth or what. But it would be pretty pretty boss. If you had a crate dragon pearl lightsaber, I'd be scared of you. It'd be a little inconvenient to carry around if you just kept the the whole pearl mounted on, on one of those you know, light, uh, flashlight handles. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's why you would be a badass, man. You'd be you'd be hefting <laughs> this thing around. You don't even have to turn it on; just clonk people with it. <laughs> you hit them over the head. Clonk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Great dragon. Darth crate. <laughs> Darth crate. <laughs> And then after this, we get the celebration, and then the town people. First, you don't like the sand people. Then you get together, and then you're friends. you friends. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely got a uh, three amigos vibe to it for sure, right? I mean, Seven Samurai, Magnificent Seven, Three Amigos. It's all the same. Yeah. And and, uh, and, and then Cobb, Cobb's give him, Cobb gives him the armor. He's like, hey, you earned it. Yep. You know? That's right. And, and he starts and just like Jack town. Burton. He, he's like, yeah. he's like, yeah, I did. Are you going to kiss him? And he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe later in the series. Who knows? Maybe, maybe Who later knows? on. And then uh, Mando drives off on the speeder. He's got the little tyke with him. 
And then we see a figure standing up on a hill, watching everything that's going on. And he kind of turns around, and you get a quick glimpse of who it's supposed to be. Who's that supposed to be, Danny? Well, I, I think... I think it's Boba Fett. Yeah, that's that's the word that's going around. Uh, Boba Fett survived, which we've always kind of heard the legend of that anyways. But uh, supposedly he's looking for his armor. Don't you think it would be like where he was at last? <laughs> I'm just, just saying. <laughs> you, you may have a point. But, you know, I, th- I think that... Uh... Well, you know, I think that the whole thing is that people have been excited about this character, myself included, since yes. he first graced the, the 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 screen. And for that reason, they want to make sure that they give people what they want. That's one of the reasons why this show is, is so popular. It's found a way to give people what they want without spoon feeding it to them in a way that's, you know, that, that's entirely too, I don't know, childish. You know, they, right. they give you all the things you're looking for in a way that, that seems appropriate and, and, uh, and well thought out, you know, as opposed to just kind of sticking stuff in because they're like, well, people are going to want a bunch of references. You know, it's, it really seems well thought out and it seems like a a project of love. Right. And I say 80% chance this is who it is, but I still think there's a chance it could be a curveball. They throw it. I mean, they do have a, a Timuru, Morrison playing the part too, so I mean it's it's Jango Fett, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Which if you know the story, Boba Fett is a clone of Jango Fett, so that all ties into it really nice and tight. But there's always a chance they can throw you a curveball with this. So, uh, but I would say that's mainly what it's looking like, and that's the hype that's going around, which is super exciting for again for us Star Wars fans because we can only hope for. A Boba Fett and Mando either fight against each other or teaming up and fighting against some people or whatever. Yeah, that's the dream, right? Well, and, you know, people have already gone on to the um, the site for the show and seen where, you know, he's he's listed as Boba Fett. So right. there, there's no well, hiding there's... that stuff from anybody anymore in this day and age. And supposedly... There is rumors going around too that there is a a set series. Uh, there's been some rights that have recently been been uh, written up, copyright stuff for Boba Fett logo and all this kind of stuff. So we may be heading down that track. We can only hope. Yeah, I'm, I, I love it. You know, I, I think it's I think it bodes well, and and I trust the writers to put this together in a way that doesn't seem hokey. And I think yep. that's that's you know part of what's been going on is is in the in the attempt to please the fan base. The stories all yeah, seem I mean, kind of hokey. It, it's it's I don't know. It feels like we're finally getting some things that we've been waiting for, and that's that's where they've done such a great job with this is really giving the fans that stuff that we've been missing from the original series for so long. So it's just it's just done so well. It's fantastic. So. That's that's uh, the episode one of season two. Is the Marshall, the Marshall, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm really digging it. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. Me too, man. I mean, and I, I I hope everybody out there who's listening enjoys it as well. I mean, you know, we just walk through it step by step, and I hope that we were able to kind of give you some stuff you didn't know about, but. Uh, ultimately, man, if you like our show and you like the same stuff we do, then check it out. And then uh, listen to the episode after you watch it, because I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. Right. So, again, we want it to be kind of a conversation piece that goes along for the people that, that are watching the show. And that way you can tell us, hey, what about this? You left out this, or y'all did a good job on this, or y'all suck at that. I mean, <laughs> that's kind yeah. of the whole point, right? And also, it's as a bonus. It's the people. It's for the people, by the people. <laughs> and I helped. <laughs> uh, as a bonus, because, you know, normally on Helming, we do uh, where we ask Brian Blessed what he thinks about the episodes. We have a That's special, right. a special guest. Also special guest. And also special Names up on the marquee. <laughs> oh. 
we've got uh, Boba Fett, and we're going to ask him, Boba Fett, what did you think about Episode 8, The Marshal? What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I just Boba hit a Fett button. I didn't know what it was going to say. <laughs> Boba Fett does not talk to Rick. He's no I good know, to me, he... deaf. I, I saw where you know, somebody say where well, a blind dude with a stick, you know, beat him. So you know, it's kind of harsh. Boba Fett, where? <laughs> that blind dude was Han Solo, though. Not... Yes, it was. It was. <laughs> All right, folks. I believe that's going to do it for this episode. Let us know what you think. We're going to plan on trying to crank these out as often as the episodes come out, and uh, I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. You got anything you want to add? I, I I thought you were talking to the to the listener, and you were saying, "Do you have anything you want to add? You know, let, let let us know." I didn't know you were talking to me, but absolutely, I I just want to say that I'm enjoying the show, and I I love having you guys out there to listen to it. I know we're all on the same page, and um, thanks for listening. <laughs> all right, <laughs> we will talk to you guys later. Adios.